Consumer prices soared more than expected last month as inflation jumped to a 13-year high, squeezing American pocketbooks. Now the big question is, is this temporary or an indication of longer-term inflation? Alexis Christophorus, anchor and reporter for Yahoo Finance, is here to break it all down for us. So Alexis, let's take a look at the numbers. This key measure for inflation, the Consumer Price Index, jumped 0.9% in June. As we said, that was the biggest one month increase in 13 years. And if you look at the past 12 months, right, prices are up 5.4%, also the biggest annual jump in 13 years. So as we think back to 2008, that big number of 13 once again, 13 years ago, an unlucky number, I think, the economy was coming out of the Great Recession. So what's pushing prices up now? Put it into perspective for us. Yeah, sure. I mean, this was really, these numbers are startling when you look at them, Kira. You know, we're paying more for just about everything right now, from, from cars and clothing to, to food and gasoline. Consumers are getting squeezed. And inflation is soaring in part because prices are returning to normal levels after uh, falling uh, during the, uh, the recession, during the pandemic. So those year-over-year -year comparisons, those increases, look huge on the surface. Just take air travel, for instance. Up 25% airfares are in just the past 12 months. Hotel prices up 15% over the past year, but they are still both below where they were in June of 2019 pre-pandemic. But there are a few things here at play. Supply chains continuing to get squeezed during the pandemic. Manufacturers are having a really tough time keeping up with all of this pent-up demand we have for things like air travel and, and cars and patio furniture. There's even a patio furniture furniture shortage going on right now. We also have raw material costs. Those are the real costs that companies have to make these products. Those things are going up. And some companies like PepsiCo, like General Mills, have already said, we're going to have to pass that along to the consumer. Prices are going to be going up. And lastly, higher wages are playing a part here. We keep hearing about companies having a hard time getting the labor they need right now to do the jobs they need. So they've had to push wages higher, and some companies have chosen to make that an extra cost for the consumer. So consumers are getting squeezed right now, no matter which way you slice it. And Alexis, it sounds like you're saying some of these areas, we're seeing price increases from 2020, but not from 2019, not pre-pandemic. So are there certain areas where you are seeing those legitimate increases, even from pre-pandemic pricing, that you're really keeping an eye on right now? Yeah, absolutely. And one of them is really inflationary, and that's gasoline. Uh, if you've gone to fill up your tank lately, you, you see it. Gas prices are at their highest level right now in seven years, up 45% in just the past year. But remember, when we were in lockdown, nobody was driving and nobody was using gasoline. But as the economy continues to open up more and we travel more, higher gas prices are probably going to be around for a while. They're above $3 a gallon in much of the country. And a lot of economists I'm talking to expect that to continue at least uh, into the fall. And uh, that along with food prices, I mean, food prices continue to move up. More of us are going out to restaurants now. So dining out went up more than 4% uh, year over year. Uh, food prices up about 2.5% right now. And there's no indication that food and gas prices, really those core inflationary prices, are going to come down anytime soon. So, Alexis, if you look at all the prices that are going up from food to gas to patio furniture, you even mentioned, I mean, how is that going to affect all of us as we're moving forward just in our everyday lives and also when we start talking about an economic recovery? Yeah, that is the million dollar question right now. How much is too much for the consumer to pay? I mean, I think the, the consumer has proven that they're pretty resilient throughout this very difficult time. A lot of folks do have uh, some extra cash on hand because they didn't spend big on things during the pandemic. But if, if all of these prices uh, for everyday items continue to move up quickly, it could start to hurt the economic recovery. You know, I talked to a number of economists on a daily basis about all of this, and what they're telling me is they don't believe higher inflation will kill the economic recovery, but it certainly could slow the pace of the recovery in the coming months. And now the Fed and the White House have long maintained that this is just temporary. The, the Fed chairman will be testifying before Congress tomorrow. So do you think we could see that message start to shift? And could we start seeing more of a message that we should get used to these high prices for a while? 
Yeah, I think that you can pretty much bet that the Fed Chair Powell is going to be talking inflation tomorrow uh, with lawmakers. All along, the Fed has said they believe inflation pressures will pass. They are temporary. Because we've opened up with such gusto, prices shot higher. So again, those year-over-year -year comparisons look startling. They do believe prices will start to normalize uh, sort of around Christmas time in the fourth quarter of the year. And when that happens, inflation should s stabilize around that 2 to 3% level. That's sort of that sweet spot for the Federal Reserve. However, and here's the big however, is that if these prices continue to move higher and very aggressively more quickly than expected, the Fed may have to raise interest rates sooner than later. Uh, the last Fed meeting, we saw the Fed say they're thinking about raising interest rates by 2023. If these inflation pressures intensify, we could see rates move higher, perhaps by next year. But remember, let's not get too nervous. Rates are still historically low. They're near 0%. So it would be one interest rate hike, and it would be a moderate one. But it could be enough to, to rattle investors uh, and consumers. All right. Alexis Christophers, always great to have you, Alexis. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.